What you guys got another video? Microsoft's new AI photo app is slowing down people's computers. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix it in this video. So if you type photo and click on the photos app right here, this is the photos app on Windows 11. And this is causing a few problems because uh, Microsoft's new photo app can slow down your PC, especially if it's automatically starting when Windows boots up. And this is due to the app being redeveloped using different frameworks and additional uh, new AI features. And this is what's causing the issue with uh, the photo app. So how can we go about fixing it? Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings by clicking on the settings cog up the top here. This is where you can customize your app. You can use dark mode or light mode, and you can also show gallery title uh, attributes. You can toggle that on or off, and you can enable the locational based features and also show iCloud photos if you want to. These are all the rocker buttons that you can just turn on and off for the, some of the settings inside here if you want to customize it and continue to use this app. Now down a little bit further here, we do have OneDrive here as well, but this is the part where you can go back to the Photos Legacy app. By clicking on this Get Photos Legacy, this will open up the Microsoft Store and allow you to download the old Photo Legacy app, which was a lot more smoother and a lot more people prefer to use it. So if you do prefer to use the older version of this, then go ahead and click on the Get button and this will go ahead and download the application from Microsoft uh, Store there. And what we're going to do is we can now open the application up and you'll see that you do have the old uh, legacy photo app back on your system. You'll still have the newer uh, AI type of app that you have on here as well. You can see it's still on here and I'll show you how you can uninstall these if you want to uninstall them and use something else. So here we have all our photos here. Let me just drop this one down here and take a look at the Photo Legacy app right here. This is a lot lighter on the system because it doesn't have AI built into it, whereas the new Photo app does have AI uh, embedded into the framework of that app. You've got your settings here, your appearances, just like you would on the other app. There's slight different changes you can do on here because this is the older Photo Legacy app that we've got installed on here. So let me go ahead and close these off and I'll show you what you can do if you don't want the Windows app whatsoever. Well, you can go to settings here, inside the settings panel, come down to apps and then go into installed apps. Inside your installed apps here, all you need to do here is find the Microsoft Photo app. And there should be two of them on here now because we've installed the older photo C legacy app which is right here and we also have the photos app so you can click on the three dots and click uninstall and it will uninstall the actual ai photo app from your system and if you want to use the legacy one you can do but if you want to uninstall both of these just click the three dots and uninstall them both and they are now gone from your system so if you do a search for photos you're not going to have any sort of photo app on your system but you might be saying to yourself, well, hold on a second. Well, how am I going to look at my photos or edit my photos? Well, you've got other options. You can use something like this program here, which has been around for many, many, many years. Works with all versions of Windows XP right up to Windows 11, 32-bit and 64-bit versions right here. And again, it's a free program that you can download. It's got a 64-bit and you've also got plugins here as well. So we're going to download the 64-bit version because we are on Windows 11 and that only supports 64-bit operating systems. Here is the application here. You can choose where you want to install it and choose whether you want it for the current user or for all users. Let's go ahead and click next and next again. Oh, let's go back. There's some other options here. If you want to associate these extensions to the new application that we're putting in here, you can just highlight these and select them. You can do this a little bit later on if you wanted to. Click next. And now we can use the application in the application data folder that is recommended, or you can choose another option up the top. We're going to leave it as the recommended option. And once we've done this, we can click done. And now we have our app installed on the system. Now, what you'll find with this app is it's pretty lightweight and it's also a very basic looking app, but it's very powerful and it has a lot of extra add-ons that you can add on with plugins and there's also a lot of features inside here which i'll show you how to add these in in a second but you can see 
Just the basic install has got file, edit, image, options, view and help. Let's go ahead and open up an image here. So I'm just going to go to the home button here and photos and select one of these images and we can take a look at it. So let's go ahead and click open here. And there we are. We've just got an image editor here that we can edit this image and we can do all sorts of stuff like you would do with the other app that you have built into Windows. Now, yes, of course, you have to install something on here, whereas Microsoft are giving you an app. But if you'd like your personal uh, privacy and stuff like that, then maybe using another app like this might suit you better if you're one of those people that like to use less Microsoft apps as possible. So you've got all your functions here. Let's go ahead and install some of the plugins. So we need to go back to the website here and underneath the download button, there is a plugins uh, button here. Let me click on this and click 64 bit and we can now go ahead and install some of these plugins. It's going to give me an error here because the application is open. So I need to close this application off first and then install the plugins and it will go in perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Installation successful. Now we can open up our application again right here. And now let's go ahead and open up that image again. So go open and we can go back to this one right here. Click open again. And then we have the image open. So what has this actually done? What can we do now with this actual application? So let's go through here under image. You'll see there's a bunch of stuff here that you can actually use now, like resize, resample. We've got decrease uh, color depth. You've got convert to grayscale show your channels negative and also color corrections and you've got replace color and it's sharpen red eye removal effects you've got all your effects here like all painting emboss blur and all that sort of stuff as well here you can swap colors there's lots of good stuff on here and it is free and you can install it onto your pc and use it it's a lot more lightweight and it should have enough on here you can even uh, put sepia color on here very quick and easy on this little application so yeah there's much more this app can do but i'm just showing you some of the things that you can do inside the image section here but you've got a lot of other stuff like uh, show the paint uh, box here so we've got the paint box up here as well uh, which is quite nice so you can even uninstall paint on uh, windows as well and use this as a, a one thing does all really if you wanted to uh, but yeah pretty decent little application probably one of the better ones out there and it's completely free so let me know in the comment section below whether you're using the Windows Photo app and whether you've had any issues with it like crashing or slowing down your computer. I'll be interested to read your comments and whether you use a third party photo app. I'll be interested to read your comments about which ones you use. Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat if you fancy a chat about any sort of topic. Bye for now.